Tigran Fibotian knows how to scale a network service without fail using Rust, MIO, and a threat pool to go so fast all competitors pale. <laughs> Yeah, th thanks for a great introduction, actually. Uh, I'm Tigran. Um, for the uh, past, like, eight years, uh, I've been doing system engineering, uh, mostly helping companies to uh, optimize their uh, cloud environments, and especially network-heavy applications. And you will be amazed how, how much you can save as a company just optimizing your network stack. And uh, it's, it's just saving a lot of your uh, resources for cloud computing. Uh, so I'm uh, typing uh, many programming languages per day. It's uh, four or five. Uh, that's my daily work. And uh, Rust is not the major one, but the, it's something that like uh, I enjoy even doing like after work. And this project actually started uh, the project like uh, to uh, feed my uh, interest. Uh, and uh, I'm doing a lot of motorcycling, adventure riding, and also skiing. That's a lot. Yeah, so a uh, few words about Trescale. Uh, we're not going to dive into deep uh, how it actually behaves. Uh, so in a few words, it's just a scalable pops-up system where you have the entire event distribution system without any central point and without any failure. Uh, it's just uh, routing for the events. Uh, first implementation was uh, on Go, obviously, because it's, ju it's just easy. It's uh, easy to code. Uh, but after running it on a production uh, with very heavy scale, uh, it turns out that uh, Go's car garbage collection messing a lot uh, with uh, uh, like memory deallocation and heavy traffic. Uh, so. Uh, second uh, implementation was on C++, but after having a weak uh, working example on the production, uh, we got a segfault error, uh, and we even didn't make any de debugging, so we just started to write on Rust, because of the... <laughs> yeah. <be> <laughs> Yeah, at that time we had some experiments, but we thought, okay, maybe Rust is too early, but then we actually saw that it's uh, a pretty mature language to use. And uh, uh, for our specific needs, uh, we made on C++ the uh, ba base loop library called base loop, which is actually almost the same thing as MIO, but with less features, the specific need features that we needed for that time. And after we saw that MIO like completes all the features that we need, we just starting writing on that. And actually writing to Rust, uh, we convinced from MIO. Because if Rust community didn't have that uh, library, we wouldn't start doing the Rust. And uh, the base uh, usage of MIO, here's actually the uh, example code. It's very simplified. Uh, basically what it does, it just makes uh, event loop around the uh, existing operating system epoll or k event uh, based on the operating system. And uh, it just re registers specific sockets uh, to receive events and uh, uh, make some uh, data processing with them. Each single event, uh, as you can see, there's a, a, like a infinite loop uh, which contains your entire logic and it operates until your application is alive. So it's the base principle of event loop, uh, and it's single-threaded. So if you can imagine the application which works uh, with the event loop, it's something like this. Uh, you have uh, the infinite loop which produces specific actions based on kernel events, then uh, using a thread pool uh, just to optimize your processes, you using a thread pool and uh, picking up some pool uh, some thread inside that pool to perform some action and return back uh, to your event loop and uh, continue doing your process. This is like the base uh, for almost any kind of single-threaded application. Uh, but uh, we actually faced uh, some issues with this, uh, especially performance issues, because uh, like first point of uh, three scale was uh, to scale, then 
it should be like super heavy network application. So having working it uh, on all CPUs without like a single thread, uh, that's like pretty important part. And uh, Rust helped us uh, to develop a technique with uh, MIO, uh, which is looking something like this. Let me, oh, oh, this works. Okay, so which looks something like this. So basically we have, instead of thread pool, uh, we have uh, threads, uh, which is uh, the same amount of threads as you have uh, CPU cores. And each thread running uh, single threaded loop, uh, which we, we called IO loop, uh, which means that we have a main thread which receives the connection, makes some authentication stuff, the first initial handshake, and then passes that socket to uh, I.O. loop, which then performs the uh, specific I.O. operation with his own uh, action and uh, task receiver mechanism inside that single uh, thread. So this helps to uh, handle a lot more connections that we could, uh, uh, in a previous example, if when we have only one uh, event loop, and in this use case, uh, we specifically could uh, interact uh, through uh, event I.O. loop. If someone uh, stuck on one task, uh, the main loop detects that and catches that action and uh, just uh, performing that later on when other threads are freed up. So basically we have some control system over multiple uh, I.O. loops and this is uh, mainly we got this uh, performance uh, because of the Rust uh, thread saving, uh, thread safety model. And uh, this is like the, the entire uh, process works uh, completely non-blocking. Uh, so everything is uh, written with the thread channels, uh, which is uh, pretty awesome performance uh, in terms of uh, real code execution. So. Uh, here is like the uh, example of the main uh, uh, main handler loop. Uh, basically, it whenever you got some TCP socket through accept or if it's a client uh, socket, uh, you basically making some validation around uh, I don't know maybe uh, certificate checking or the data validation whenever you can perform that, and then basically what you are doing is. Uh, Using MIO principle, you are deregistering that TCP socket from current loop and passing that uh, using the Rust channels to one of the threads that operating another loop. So that's the main principle for transferring. And after this transfer operation, this main handler loop don't know anything about that TCP socket. It goes away from him, and uh, the other processing and input output operations is just on. Uh, that uh, thread. So this is a little bit like more code, but uh, the concept is that the EO handler loop receives that and just registers that inside his pole, inside his event loop. So that way uh, we can just transfer connections between uh, multiple event loops and have operational like uh, completely async principle without any blocking data. Uh, so that's the main benefits. And the optimizations, uh, we had a customer uh, which is operating uh, like few petabytes of network uh, data transfer, especially images uh, per day, and uh, they have got like from six to 10 times optimization in terms of memory after deploying this, uh, uh, this principle uh, versus Go, so, and uh, the main benefit from us is that uh, using this uh, technique, uh, we are able to like scale the code uh, because uh, Rust itself is checking the safety, and uh, if you are, for example, hiring a new developer, he don't know this trading model, and he writes some component around that, it just Rust prevents uh, some a memory leak between passing uh, some data between channels and uh, threads. And uh, of course, using multiple cores as a multiple event loops, not only tasks, 
uh, we got a really huge benefits of uh, network bandwidth uh, because now we are able to uh, make input output more aggressively with using multiple threads. And uh, yeah, that's it, the main benefit. So in terms of closures, uh, this is uh, the awesome thing that uh, we, we have a lot in our code base. Uh, so the principle is that when we need to implement or execute some task, uh, we are not passing uh, data and uh, we are passing a closure which contains the logic itself uh, with the data in it, uh, which helps just to uh, make some kind of a generic uh, task executional uh, threads or uh, inside the thread pool, which is uh, like generic and you can pass any kind of uh, operation which makes CPU execution or other stuff with the data itself in it. Uh, and it's just helped us a lot to uh, scale the code base from like uh, having uh, multiple traits into multiple crates uh, even uh, without like changing anything inside the base uh, code. Uh, so this is the main uh, feature that uh, we, we liked a lot uh, after like moving uh, away to Rust. Uh, in terms of infrastructure, so we are partially open source. So base technology itself, three scale is open source, but it's some kind of a demo. Uh, we mainly showing that uh, to customers or they're uh, trying out on their own. Uh, but uh, the base code is uh, written in Rust, uh, but supportive to technologies, I would say the API endpoint is not Rust because mainly the lack of uh, hiring, mainly. So uh, that's the main issue of getting started uh, with Rust. Uh, yeah, I guess that's it. Uh, so I prepared a very short talk. Uh, so yeah, and uh, if you have any questions, uh, Please. So to, to, we have time for questions, but we need to figure out how to start these. <laughs> so. Test it. Woo, it's the red button. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Hello, thank Hi. you. Um, I was wondering if uh, I played with a zero MQ, and is, is it possible to do kind of the same thing of connecting a Rust uh, application with a Python application, uh, uh, Node.js? Yeah. With, with it? Yeah, so the. Uh, Communication protocol itself, the custom binary protocol, uh, but we have like API integrations with high level application, including the web sockets. Uh, so one of our clients uh, is using uh, inside the mobile app. So basically we compiled uh, our Rust SDK in, inside the mobile app and providing them uh, this real time networking feature for their mobile app. So basically it's it just integratable and uh, thanks to MIO, we can just integrate that to any, any kind of platform. Uh, there's a question, Christopher? Yeah, some other questions. Thanks for the talk, actually. Uh, I have a question on the data. Uh, how much copying of the data is actually happening when you uh, have a moving closures? I mean, do you have uh, like multiple actions which should be executed on the same data? Uh, yeah, we, we have uh, multiple actions, but uh, data itself is not copying. We have basically the uh, byte array, and every time when we are doing something, we are actually doing by reference to that uh, array. And uh, in terms of protocol, we are just appending like 60 byte uh, to that original uh, data, and we are not doing any data manipulation to like customers' original data. Whenever you have some API endpoint and transferring data through three scale, we are not touching that. We are only working with our 60 byte header, uh, which is our main protocol stuff. And uh, that uh, header is all, all the time parsed and 
uh, decoded using a byte reference without copying. So we are using some uh, little pieces of unsafe code uh, just to give that uh, like manipulation more easily because we have some uh, big endian and uh, little endian, endian convert convertation between uh, just to figure out the lengths uh, of the bytes uh, some in some places. Uh, but it's uh, some that protocol came from C++ code and we didn't change that. We just made the unsafe uh, Rust code. Okay, thanks. Hello. Hi. Uh, you said you're using MIO. Yeah. Uh, would it make sense uh, in your case or is it possible to use Tokyo? So uh, during that time when we started writing, the Tokyo wasn't that uh, stable. I mean, it's not the release, uh, released yet. Uh, but then when it's released, we started to think about moving, but it was uh, too much change because the uh, principle of features inside the Tokyo is not relevant for our case uh, because basically we are transferring uh, TCP sockets between multiple threads. And actually inside the uh, GitHub issues uh, for MIO, uh, I raised the question, is it really thread safe to pass uh, a TCP connection between multiple threads, and uh, Alex actually replied that uh, generally no, but if you if you are using an in Linux-based environment or Unix, so basically it's not it wouldn't work on Windows, uh, but for Windows we did don't making like uh, thread uh, TCP socket thread passing. We are using different technique. Uh, but we all have only one customer, which requires a window, so it's not a deal. No. Okay. There was another question over there. Y yeah. Um, so you mentioned that you are uh, taking the existing over here. Okay. Uh, <laughs> the, the existing uh, messages that you receive and append or prepending some stuff at the beginning. Yeah. How do you make sure that um, you have room to do that? Or are these like fixed length headers? Are they dynamic? And how do you make sure that when you actually read the data in, there's enough room? Uh, before the data that you're getting in order to place your headers? Yeah, so if you can imagine the byte flow, uh, we're basically getting your data uh, and uh, make, making sure that we have a proper length uh, because of the like nature of TCP. We know that if data flow ends with some specific point, uh, then your data, uh, that's uh, how it is. So uh, we're basically measuring the length of bytes and uh, putting that uh, with the big endian that you have this amount of length, it's a four byte uh, integer for us. So basically whenever our another uh, uh, node reading your data, it tries to find first, first four bytes to decode and understand how many uh, length, uh, length he needs to accept uh, from another node. So that's how we transferring data and making sure that there is no data loss. We're basically transferring the length as a first four bytes. Um, do you plan uh, any U integration from uh, the talk before? So for web? Uh... Uh, no, so we, we have uh, one customer with uh, web integration, but we provided for them web sockets. Uh, I, I guess with WebAssembly, it's uh, really complicated because not uh, all production browsers right now supporting and uh, not all customers uh, want to see uh, hacky website WebAssembly right now because uh, generally it's not in production. So most of the uh, like companies don't want to see that on their environment. That's from my experience because uh, we tried also experiment on that way. Yeah, thank you and enjoy your lunch. <laughs>